This is a quick video describing how I'm power injecting on these RGB nodes. I, I call these C7s because they look very similar to the C7 incandescent bulbs that we're replacing with these. They're, these particular lights are going to outline a section of our ground that's approximately 150 feet long. So these are just a little bit over six inch spacing. We're going to mount them at six inch spacing. So to get around 150 feet at six inch spacing, it's going to take 300 nodes and because I'm having to power inject multiple places I decided that I was going to run these off of one power supply and I've got one of Andy Harrison's power distribution boards here and if you'll notice on these pigtails coming out the only brown and blue wires the brown is 12 volts positive and the blue is the ground and that's hooked in back into the power supply and that's feeding out four different outputs. I could put six, but for this project, this power supply is only feeding the, seven, the C7 bulbs. I only needed four outputs, and we're just using these male three-pin pigtails. And it's hard to see, but that's there are four of those coming out. It's important to note that the signal I'm sending this is coming about 20 feet, uh, which is, a fairly long distance to run the signal can degrade but over here is the controller when I'm testing I try and simulate real-world conditions how it's going to be out uh, in my yard but if you'll notice right here there's only a blue wire and a yellow wire coming out of the controller that's the ground the blue and the yellow with the green stripe is the signal and that's the only thing that I've got running from the controller over to my lights. This power supply here is simply running power for the controller and a couple of the other props that are coming out. But when we did the math on these lights here, these six strings, each at um, six amps per string, six times six is 36 amps. And so that uh, just by itself is uh, you know, really pushing the maximum limits of one power supply all on its own. So to, I think to be safe, uh, really it's better to run these at 80%. But I'm gonna tell you how I've got it. So the wire running from the controller here, even though it's a three pin cable, it's only running the ground and the signal. That's coming into this T connector here. And on the other end of the T, is the actual wire for the lights. That's the first, you know, that's the plug for those lights. But here in the middle of the T is where the power is coming from. That power is coming through 20 feet of 18 gauge cable from this power supply and the power distribution block right there. And so I tried this two ways. And the first way I'm showing you now, so we've got power and signal coming together, going into this first string. And then the first string and the second string are just connected together. And then again, I just connected the second and the third string. So that's 150 nodes to there. And when I connected those and just put power at the beginning, these lights here were, were blinking at white. There just simply wasn't enough power uh, and the signal going through. So we added right here another T, and there's power coming from the power supply into this T. The thing that you need to know when using a T this way is when the power is coming in, it's not only flowing onto the next string, but it's also flowing back in. So if you're thinking that you're just powering you know, the first section and then you put a T and you're powering the next one, it doesn't work that way. The power is flowing both ways. Uh, power is kind of like water. It's going to flow to where there's the least resistance until it balances itself out. So once again, we've got from the third string to a T and then to the fourth string. So the fourth string connected to the fifth string, connected to the sixth string. And then at the end of the final string is another power injection coming back to the power supply here. So in this configuration, we've got power one time, two times, 
and three times. And what I notice is that every now and then, when they go to solid white, I'll get just a tiny bit of flickering. And so that told me, see, you could see this one bulb over here was flickering just a little bit with white. So what I did that, that fixed this, and I wanted you to see that so you could see why I needed to go with four, my final solution is to bring power in at the beginning, hook the first two together, put a T here and add power. So power times one, power times two, combine these two together, put another T in here, that's power times three, these two bulbs, or these two strings here, and then the fourth power at the end. And my testing showed me that when I did that, that I had good solid whites all the way across. The other thing that you need to know in our setup is that the power supply is kind of centrally located in the yard and the lights go down or you know across down across and back up the power supply will go in the middle and we're running power out to here power out to here and there are two strands to the beginning and then again to the end and once again those lights are coming around and so each one of those power lines running out is about 25 feet and so there's going to be a power drop already coming through 25 feet of cable. And that's why we were testing also to see the gauge of the cable. We found that this 18 gauge wire is working okay for what we need. Note too that on the power supply, there is a little uh, pot right here. And if you need, if the voltage drops, you can always turn the voltage up so that you have 12 volts at the end. So I hope this makes sense. And if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to ask.